Amen. Amen. Hey, I want to open up with a scripture. Um, we, we prayed it this morning from Ezekiel chapter 37. And many of you probably already know this, man. Some of the men, we talked about this yesterday. And just can I tell you, um, even when we left there, I was getting messages about the incredible conversation that we had on Saturday. Like, we got lost in our conversation talking about revival and how important it is. So Ezekiel 37, Ezekiel was a, he's a, he was a prophet um, in the Old Testament, a prophet to the Jews when they were in exile in Babylon. So he was sent out to encourage them. And I just want to read this, and we're just going to open up in prayer. I'm not going to read the entire thing, but I just want you to get the gist of, of what we're asking God today. Ezekiel 37, verse 1, it says, the Lord took, this is Ezekiel saying, the Lord took, took hold of me. How many of you want the Lord to take hold of you today? He said, the Lord took hold of me, and I was carried away by God's spirit, by the spirit of the Lord, to a valley filled with dry bones. He led me all, the, all around among the bones that covered the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere across the ground. And it says, and they were completely dried out. Then he asked me, son of man, can these bones become living people again? And Ezekiel said, oh, sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone know the answer to that. Then he said, speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I am going to put breath into you and make you live again. I will put uh, flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and you will come alive again. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So Ezekiel did exactly what the Lord said, and, and, and he prophesied in the bones. If you continue to read, they begin to come together, and flesh came on the bones, and muscles came on. It's a unique story, one that we should read and just get familiar with. But when these bones, when these men, when these people stood up, they were men without life. And I want to read this last verse, and then we're going to pray, and then we're going to, uh, and then we're going to worship God. Can I get you to stand to your feet? Verse nine, verse nine says, "Then he said to me, "Speak a prophetic message to the winds, son of man. Speak a prophetic message and say, "This is what the Lord, the sovereign Lord says." Come, O breath, from four winds, breathe into these dead bodies so that they may live again. So I spoke the message as he commanded, and breath came into their bodies. They all came to life and stood on their feet, on their feet, a great army. And we said this morning, we never know who's in here today. That's standing without the breath of life inside of them. Like it's so easy for us to put on a happy face and be dead on the inside. And our prayer this morning is that God, you would breathe life into us. Some of us may be dried up. Some of us may be empty. And this may have been our last stop today. God, we're praying that you would breathe life. That you would breathe life into us. That your anointing would touch each and every one of us today and make us alive. Pray with me. Father, we surrender all to you this morning. And our prayer, God, is that as we begin to offer up our worship to you, God, it's signifying your worth to us. So, God, we're going to worship you this morning. 
And God, our heart is that you would come and inhabit the praises of your people this morning. God, that you would sit down, that you would be in our worship session today, God. And God, where the spirit, where your spirit is, there is transformation. God, we can't remain the same. So we pray this morning, God, that as we open our mouths and we worship you, that if we, as we lift our hands and worship you, God, as we kneel and fall down on our, our knees and worship you, however we worship you today, God, our prayer is that your anointing would come in and just invade this atmosphere, flood this sanctuary today, and touch each and every person, God, from the oldest to the youngest, that we may draw closer to you as a people. Build your church, God. This is our prayer this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Are you guys ready to worship this morning? Amen. Amen. Let's worship our sovereign Lord and King, for he reigns over all, over all situations, over all things.
Today, we want you to lift Pastor Danny in prayer. We want you to take care of everyone in the sanctuary today, Lord. And we ask that you just help us, Lord. Help us. We don't know what we're going through, but we know that you know, Lord. And we know that you're a provider and you're a way maker. And we thank you for that, Lord. And today, Lord, we come to you. And we allow you to move our hearts. And we thank you, Jesus. And we thank you, Jesus. You are moving in our midst. Dark. 
all of us have probably something going on where we need to declare over that situation, over what's going on, that he is the way maker. It doesn't matter what it looks like. And I know if nothing else, I'm singing it over Pastor Danny.
How many of you believe that song? Like there's no other name above the name of Jesus. And I feel like a broken record when I say that every, the Bible tells us, every tongue shall confess, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that what? That he is Lord. Amen. Just a powerful, 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 I would say it's an anthem. Not just a worship song, but man, the, the, the name of Jesus is incredibly powerful. As a matter of fact, that's what we're going to talk about today, as a matter of fact. We're going to just dive into talking about that name and what, what that name really means. Amen. Father, we thank you. God, for our worship team, God, in leading us into worship. God, we thank you for your people who gathered here today, God, to commune with you. And God, we do it in a variety of ways. We do it through our worship. We do it through our praise. And God, we do it through listening to the word. And God, we pray that whatever we hear today, whether through song, whether through prayer, whether through the preaching of the word, that we hear your voice. And God, that your voice and the words that you may speak may resonate with us, God. And not only do that, God, but change us and transform us into the image of Jesus Christ. What does that look like? It looks like love. It looks like grace. It looks like forgiveness. It looks like truth. It looks like power. It looks like confidence, not in flesh and not in, not in man, but confidence in you, God. We thank you for your presence today, God. And I pray today that today would be like none other for each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. If you're able to, um, man, how are we doing today? How are we doing today? Amen. I know we're City Mission. We're, we're City Mission Church. But I like to say, how are we doing missionaries? Because we're all missionaries. I like to say, how, how are we doing city missionaries? Because we're all on a mission um, for God. Um, typically, what we would do next is we would take up our offering and we would have you stand up and we would say a prayer. We would read a couple of scriptures and then we would have you come to the front to give your offering. But uh, we're not going to do that today since uh, we're in COVID. But what we would do is at the appropriate time, there's a box in the back um, and there's a plate right there. And there's a, a few different other ways to give as well. You can give through the church app, um, which, man, we've been doing incredible since we've stood the church app up. All you have to do is go find City Mission on that church app, click donation and, and, and give whatever God places on your heart. Um, you can also give through what we call sum up where you would send just send a request to our, 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 our box and then let us know how much you want to donate. You'll donate. We'll send, you, um, we'll send you instructions on how to do that. The typical way, um, if you live here in Germany, you can, uh, we, I, I think we have uh, uh, little sheets back there. You can give directly to the IBAN if you have a German bank account. Give directly to the IBAN. Um, or, again, the traditional way. Drop your physical paper, um, dollars or euro in in the um, in the plates in the plate up front and in the box in the back. Um, just really want to say thank you to um, to our city missionaries and those of you that that give faithfully uh, each week, every other week. Um, because even in this season, man, God has still been blessing this this house of worship. And uh, we're appreciative of you, your faithfulness, and the seeds that you sow um, each and every week. Just want to pray for the offering. Then we have uh, a couple of announcements um, that we're, we'll share, and then we'll jump right into um, the Word of God. Father, 
we thank you, God, for, for being faithful. God, we thank you that your word says, I mean, you own a cattle on a thousand hills. God, you never seen your seed, your children begging and in need, God. We thank you that you provide for all of our needs according to your riches and your glory. I thank you, God, that when we decide, make a decision to give unto you, God, oh, Lord, you don't bless us 30, 60, but oftentimes a hundredfold. And we thank you for being faithful. We thank you, God, for the generous hearts, those that have a desire to give but unable to at the moment. God, I pray that you would bless them. Those that would give, God, I pray that you would bless that household and bless their faithfulness to you, God. We thank you that our giving is not unto man, but it's unto you. It's out of obedience to your word, God. We thank you for your faithfulness that never ends. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, just, Just a couple of announcements. Again, starting this Friday coming up, 16 October through uh, 18 October, we're having our Freedom Outreach Ministry to the Military European Conference. Um, and while, while we would love to have been, uh, while we would love to celebrate that time in Garmisch due to COVID, we're unable to do that. So we're going to have a virtual interactive service um, online. Um, And it's going to be great. Uh, We've got some great speakers lined up for Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday morning. Um, And what we're encouraging you to do is participate. You can go to our City Mission Facebook page, register there, um, register to participate. And if you register, you'll be able to participate in the Saturday Saturday afternoon sessions. Uh, We're going to have breakout sessions. Um, And I tell you, we've got some incredible topics that we're going to be talking about, um, and you don't want to miss that. So I encourage you, if if you want to grow and be a part of it, register for the Freedom Outreach Ministry to the Military European Conference. And what we're going to do, um, we're going to meet here. You don't have to, but we're going to make it available. We're going to meet here um, on Friday night at 7 p.m., We're going to meet here Saturday night at 7 p.m., and we would love for you to join us um, to be a part of this uh, worship uh, experience that we're going to have starting this Friday. Not only um, will City Mission here in K-Town, but all the ministry to the military centers throughout Europe uh, will be meeting uh, in their centers or in their churches as well. I mean, we've got Stuttgart, Spangdalem. Um, uh, churches in Italy, in the UK, they're all going to be gathering Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday morning for, uh, for the conference. So I encourage you to, to, to join in and be a part of that. One more announcement I have for you today, and then we'll, we'll pray and we'll jump right into the word. Our official discipleship groups kicked off last Sunday, and they're going to run for about six weeks. And, um, and I tell you, what we do on Sunday mornings, I think, is incredibly important. I really do. But what we do throughout the week, I believe, is just as important as what we do today. And I want to encourage each and every one of you. We've got four disciple groups that started last Sunday. As a matter of fact, we have one that's, uh, that's going to kick. Well, we've got one discipleship group that's held on Sunday at 4 p.m. So here's who we have. We have Pastor Danny and Emma. They're holding a discipleship group here at the church, and that's on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. We've got Ferdinand and Marina in Mockingbox, in Mockingbox that they're holding their uh, discipleship group, and that's Tuesday uh, at 7 p.m. Then we have Aaron and Summer who, who are in the back. They're holding their discipleship group um, on, on Sundays, starting at 4 p.m. And then we've got Chitty. Um, that's, raise your hand, Chitty, so they'll know. We've got Chitty. He hosting, uh, he's hosting a group um, around the university um, area, and that's targeting our students and our singles. 
And that will kick off on the 23rd of October, on Friday, the 23rd of October at 6 p.m. So I encourage you, connect with the life groups. Connect with those discipleship groups. And it's about, it's about connecting in community, doing life together, and growing in God's word. Um, the subjects that they will be talking about is what we talk about on Sundays. It's a sermon-based discipleship group. So what we'll be doing is diving deeper into what we teach on Sundays, asking those questions, talking around those questions that you may not have gotten answered during the Sunday service. It's about um, if something moves you, bring that up, write it down, and we're going to talk about that in those discipleship groups. If you disagree with something that I may say, Write it down, and we'll talk about it in those discipleship groups. Because what it's all about, it's growing. It's growing. It's learning how. Just as, as, as I mean, we all, uh, many of us are adults in here, but you got a, you, you, you still a child on the inside. You just learn how to cover it up a little bit better. Uh, but we're all growing and walking and trying to follow after Jesus, and we do it at different rates. And you're not, we are not going to, uh, to mature if we're fasting on one meal per week. How many of you fast one meal per week? I mean, physical food. No, I don't see it. <laughs> and it's the same thing. As we grow, if we want to grow uh, spiritually, we have to eat throughout the week. And that's really what these discipleship groups are designed to do, is connect with one another and grow in Christ together. How do we make disciples? We do it in community. God has called no single Christian to walk alone. He calls us to walk in family, walk with the church, and that's, that's our goal, and that's what we hope to do. Amen. We're going to jump into the Word today. We're going to continue in our series called Encountering Jesus, Encounters with Jesus. Um, and this today, we're going to, we're in part three of, uh, Jesus encounter with the enemy. And this whole sermon series is based on a book written by Tim Keller, just an incredible book. I encourage you to get it, um, because we don't cover everything that's in that book. We, we, we've picked out a few key, uh, topics to talk about. And I think today is extremely important, extremely important. So before I go further, um, I just want to pray. I want to thank, uh, we've got some visitors here, uh, uh, a good friend of mine, family uh, from Ramstein, uh, chaplain at the 693rd. Sir, thank you for you and your family coming out, worshiping with us. I call them I call him the rapping chaplain. If I, <laughs> if, I, if I called him up and gave him the mic and to pray, oh, man, he's going to go around the room rapping and praying about everything that goes on in here. <laughs> Incredible. So thank you guys for uh, not only you, chaplain, but thank each and every one of you for coming out and worshiping with us. I believe God has a word for us today. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. And God, we we just, we, we invited you. I know you're omnipresent. You're everywhere at the same time, God. But we invited you at the beginning of the service, God. And God, we continue to ask, God, that for the remainder of this service, God, that you would speak to our hearts. God, that you would cause us to conform not to this world. God, not to, to, to what's going on, the, the, the ways of this world, but you would cause us to conform to your word. God, that your word would be the thing that influences our life, influences our decision, God, decisions, and influences our families and our community, God, that we would not be swayed, we would not be swayed, God, one way or the other by anything that's going on. But God, I pray that the word today would center upon you, that we can walk after you, God. That you are our model. Equip us to walk after you diligently. 
in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Over the past couple of weeks, um, we've established in the first two uh, parts of this, this particular series, uh, we established that there is, in fact, an enemy. And that enemy, his name, we call him, his name is Satan. We identify that evil is real and that people, once we, once people give their allegiance to Christ, you enter into a battle. A battle begins. A war begins. Scripture, it verifies that. So this morning, my goal is to, to make clear, since we've established that there is an enemy and we, we looked at that, we need to know where is the battlefront? Where, where, is the, where is the main line of attack? And, and how do we defeat this defeated foe? How do we defeat this defeated foe? I want to read um, really quickly. I promise I'm not going to take any detours. I'm going to just try to read the scriptures straight through, and uh, we're going to talk about it a little bit. So Matthew chapter 3, verses 13. And we're going to read all the way through chapter 4, um, verse 11. That's Matthew chapter 3, verses 13. And it says, Then Jesus came to Galilee to the Jordan, Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you, Jesus, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for, for us all to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were open to him. And this is important. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove coming to rest upon him. Verse 17, and behold, a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son whom I am well pleased. Remember that verse 17. Verse number, uh, chapter 4, verse 1 starts out, if, you, if you're reading in the ESV, it starts out with that four-letter word, then. It says, then, immediately after God said, behold, uh, this, is, this is my beloved son whom I am well pleased, then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry, and the tempter came and said to him, if you are the son of God, this is the tempter talking. This is Satan talking. Jesus said God had, the father had already told him who he was. Now the tempter is saying, if you are, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, it is written. Notice how he answered. It is written and it stands written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus is like, I know that. Verse 7 says, Jesus said to him, again, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, for the third time, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. He lays before Jesus all the kingdoms and their glory. Have, that, have you ever been presented with some great, with some good, good ideas and you had to make a choice? Verse 9, and he said to him, all these I give to you if you will fall down and worship me. This is the devil talking to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, be gone, Satan. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. And I think it's important that we look at Luke chapter 4, verses 13, where it says, 
And when the devil had ended the temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time, which means that wasn't the only time he was going to come against the son of God. I think it's very, very important that 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 we understand that even Jesus, the son of God. Was tempted. He entered temptation. He entered trials. And no one can ever see, even I, even us, no one can ever seem to secure a life of sustainment or a sustained success, uh, sustained joy, sustained happiness without trials and temptations, no matter how hard we try. We talked about this the last time. As, as hard as we try, no matter what precautions we take, no matter how well we plan, how well we, we cross our T's and dot our I's, something always comes in to wreak havoc on our happy place. In fact, this is often, this often happens to the people of God very much. Because once we give our allegiance to Jesus, we step into a what? A war, a battle. All who desires to live holy, all who desires to live godly, will suffer persecution. Peter says, do not be surprised. Don't be surprised. Don't let that thing catch you off guard. Do not be surprised at the fiery trials when they come upon you to test you. As though, he said, as though something strange has happened. Don't don't get caught off guard. We need to be aware of these things. So we know that there is an enemy. So we must understand our adversary. Because if we don't know our adversary, and if we don't know where the attacks are going to come from, we can easily underestimate and mischaracterize who the enemy is. Because when someone crosses you, you don't look at the enemy. Oftentimes, you look at the person that crossed you and say, hey, is it on or what? (laughs) We point at the wrong enemy. We point at the wrong enemy. If we're not aware, guess what? We're likely to lose a battle that's already won for us. In order to face the enemy, we need to answer three questions. Number one, who's the enemy? And we've talked thoroughly about who the enemy was. So if you want to catch up on that, just go to the Facebook page. Those messages are on there. We need to understand where is the battlefront? Where is the battlefront? You know, when I was in the military, man, before we went to battle or did anything, man, we had to, we had to analyze. We had to do a lot of analysis on what the enemy looked like, what they're capable of doing, the the likely courses of action, and all of those things, because it is required. We need to know where the battlefront is. And then number three, which we're going to we're going to talk about today is what is our best defense? And we look at all of this. We find all of this in the word. So we've identified that there is an enemy that would love to do nothing else. But annihilate you and I absolutely take us out. Why? Because even if you don't, he knows who you are. Even if you have not identified your purpose and know how important you are, the enemy does. He knows that you've got a purpose in life. And if he can offset that purpose, if he can get you off kilter just a little bit and allow you to go further and further away, if he can get you just one inch off, And keep you going in that direction. You move further and further away. He wants to get you so depressed. That you become self-defeating. And sabotage God's plan for your life. He wants to get you so frustrated. That you just give up and say you know what. Maybe it's not for me. I weigh the white flag. One of the devil's greatest tricks. Is to convince people that he doesn't really even exist, nor does God exist, and nor is God real. And if he is real, if God is real, he doesn't love you. 
because of your past. John 10 and 10, write it down. The thief comes but to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. Destroy your life, destroy your family, destroy your future, future, destroy your purpose, hinder your faith, and corrupt your vision. He wants to all together take you out. But Jesus says, I came what? That you may have life and have it more abundantly. So Satan is real. Where, where is the battlefront? Where is the main point of attack? Scriptures tell us that Satan is not only the enemy, but he's a great deceiver. Who attempts to get us to question, does God really love us? He assaulted Jesus with words. He attacked Jesus' thoughts, beliefs, mind. What did he say? If, if you are the son of God. Three times he asked Jesus that. If you are the son of God. If we allow the enemy to remain in our ear too long, we'll begin to believe his story rather than God's story. It was an assault on Jesus' identity. It was an assault on on his value, on Jesus' value to his own father. In other words, if you are indeed the son of God, prove it. Prove it. It's like the father said, I validate you. This is who you are. And Satan says, I know what he said, but what about this? Ponder on this a little bit. He wanted to introduce doubt, uncertainty in the mind of Christ. He challenged the assurance of the father's unconditional love for him. He challenged that. Have you ever been there before? Have Satan ever challenged you, challenged your purpose, challenged your calling? God has said, I've called you for a specific purpose, but through trial and error and and stumbling and bumbling and frustration, you're now questioning your calling altogether. Is this what I'm here to do? Have you ever questioned your value? Your value to God. Your value. Have you ever questioned your value to your family? Your value to your employment. Your value to your church. Your value to life. Have you ever questioned God's love? How can he love me? I am sinful. I'm undone. I'm not good enough. I wish I wasn't here. Have you ever said those words? Have you ever questioned your value or your worth? This is a tactic of the enemy that we need to be aware of. Satan's main frontal of attack is to get in your mind. It's the mind of man. He suggests ideas to our mind that contradicts God's word. It contradicts God's character. He attacks your identity. He attacks, he gets you to question who you really are. And God has already told us who we are in Christ Jesus. He says, man, when you give your allegiance to him, you're seated. You're seated in heavenly places. You're seated. You're secure in the Father's love. He's told us all of those things. It's a number. It's a list of things. But oftentimes, the enemy, he'll get in our mind and start playing with our mind. Are you truly saved? Are you truly accepted by the Father? Are you truly? How does he seek to accomplish this? He wants to keep you and I from believing in fact that he he tried to keep, he tried to convince Jesus, was he truly in fact? The son of God, the savior of the world. 
He tries to convince us that we're not what God has already told us we are. Can I remind you, Jesus, he's not an ordinary man. He is the king of heaven who comes, who comes not to a throne on earth, but to a cross on Calvary for you and I. He didn't have to. He chose to. He didn't have to stay on the cross. He chose to. He didn't have to be slandered and beaten and spat on. He chose to because he loved us. He comes to be tempted. He comes to be tried. He comes to suffer. He comes to die. But he didn't stay there. He rose again for you and I. That's the person we follow. Why did he do that? I want to read this. Why did he do that? Why did he choose to come and do all of those? Why was his pathway? Why was his pathway through suffering and anguish and all of those things? Why did he bear that for us? This is what I wrote. So that you don't have to earn his love. You can just receive his love. Because it doesn't come from how hard we work. It's not about what we do. It's about how we receive what he's done already. Ephesians chapter 2 and 5. Write that down. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 5. It says, because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in our own transgressions. When we were stumbling and bumbling and messing up, he still came and died. For you and I, for you and for, 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 for me, it's not by our works, but it's by his works. No other religion, past or present, emphasizes grace this way. It's about God's grace. Satan not only wants you to question who Jesus is, he wants you and I to question our own identity. Identity theft. We know what that is. It's a major problem in this world. Millions of dollars are taken by identity theft. Our credibility is ruined. Reputation is ruined. Life, lives are destroyed by identity theft. And all of the identity thieves, out of all of the identity thieves that exist in this, this world, there is none who can compete against Satan. None who can compete against him. Listen to this. He is a thief that comes to rob each and every one of us of our identity in Christ. I don't know how you identify yourself. You may say, you know, this is who I am. I'm such and such. I'm in the Air Force. I'm in the Army. We identify ourselves by our rank. We identify ourselves by, I'm the CEO. We identify ourselves, identi we identify ourselves by many things. I'm a student. I'm an executive. I'm this or I'm that. And Christ says, who are you really? Are those your, pr that, is that your primary identification? Or is that secondary? You and I, we're sons and daughters of Christ. Number one. One of the main things Satan wants to rob you of is your true identity and give you a fake one. Give you a fake identity so that you never ever will become who he created you to be. If he can get you to label yourself as something else, he'll keep you from becoming who he's designed you to be. He wants to trick you into being someone else so that you never truly become who you are and who he created you to be. He is a thief and a robber. The battlefront, it's in your mind. 
It's in your thoughts. It's what you believe about Jesus. It's what you believe about who you are in Christ. And can I tell you who you are? It comes from Galatians chapter 20. Galatians chapter 2, verses 20. It says, my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Who are you? Are Who are you? I am a son. You are a son and you are a daughter in Christ. Never let anyone tell you anything differently. They can call you anything. Just don't answer to it. We can't control what other people do. You know, when I, I'm just going, when Sunisha saw calling me, you, you are this and you, I'm just not going to listen. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to sit with my legs crossed. <laughs> Let me tell She might be watching, so I got to slow down. I'm just going, I'm just going to tell her, hey, when you, until you call me a son of, uh, uh, a, a son of the king, I can't answer. That's how you, don't let people tell you who you are. We should know who we are. I am a son of the king. I am a daughter of the king. I don't walk in my, I don't walk in the confidence of my flesh or the things that I do. I walk in confidence of him who called me out of darkness into his marvelous light. I am a son of a king. I am a daughter of the king. Amen. When we gave our allegiance to Christ, guess what happened? A death occurred. Woo! You died and you rose with Jesus. And there, 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 is, there is unity there now. You are in Christ. You are a new creature with a new name. You, you, came, you came to Christ with a bad heart and he gave you a new heart and a new mind. You have a new home, and it's just, it's not here. It's not your address. You're just there, TDY. We're TDY here on earth. Our home, our new home, it's in heaven. So what are you going to do with the time that you have here on TDY? That's temporary duty for those that, that are not military. Amen. You are a son. You are a daughter of the most high. And guess what? You are loved. Your image and your identity rest in a love that you can't earn, that you didn't earn. It was given. All you have to do is accept that. How many of you know I am a daughter of Christ? I am a son of the king. Amen. Amen. We know who the enemy is. And we know that the enemy, the battlefront is in our mind. He tries to attack our mind. He tries to attack our character and our identity. So what is our best defense? And we're going to end here. What is our best defense? Hey, what, can, can we just get some, can I get some help? What is our best defense in fighting the enemy? Just shout it out. The, somebody said, I heard the word a lot. Anything else? In Jesus' name. Sword of the Spirit, oh, the Word of God, that's right. Well, why do we entertain the enemy with everything else? I mean, we spend far too long just having a conversation with the enemy, just chitting, chatting with the enemy. And Jesus didn't spend any time with the enemy. When the enemy came with an assault, what did he do? He gave him the word. Our best defense against Satan is not to argue with our own words, but to war with God's. It's to war with God's word. Jesus used the scripture every time he was assaulted by Satan. He allowed the word of God to inform his thinking, which advised his actions. He allowed the word of God to inform his thinking, which advised his actions. He responded based on what was inside of him. He said, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become loaves. 
But Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but what? Every word that comes out, that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Can I get you guys to stand to your feet? The word of God is our greatest defense against the fiery arrows of Satan. There is power in God's word. I'm talking about this right here. I'm talking about this. Some of us are still paper readers. Some of us are, are digital readers. But it doesn't matter whether you read from a hard copy Bible, read it from your phone, your computer, your laptop. We have to read God's word if we expect God's word to come out of us. And Jesus was the word per John. He says I, he was, he is the word of God that I would ex exalt my word. Man, that is powerful. This word, the Bible says, is God breathed. Like just how God told Ezekiel to breathe into the dry bones. Jesus spoke words to man and man crafted and wrote it down. And we like to say, man, wouldn't it be so powerful to walk with Jesus back in the biblical days. How many of you want to walk with Jesus back in the biblical days? I, you, could, you, probably, you couldn't get your toenails done, your fingernails done, and, you know. I mean, it, it was rough back in those days. You sure you want to? Like, man, if I only walked with Jesus, if I would have been back there, man, I would have been. God says, I've sent you some. I am here. All you have to do is acknowledge that I exist. Not only do I exist, but I exist inside of each and every one of you. How sensitive are we to him? This word is God breathed. Second Timothy chapter 3 and 16. Isaiah 55 and 11. Isaiah 55 and 11. Listen to these words. It says, so shall my word that goes out from my mouth, it shall not return to me empty or void, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing in which I sent it forth to do. If we don't have those words inside of us, then when the time comes, when the war, when the battle uh, confronts us, we won't have anything to stand on, but we have to get into God's word. We've got to read God's word. We've got to get his word inside of us because that's what Jesus did. Some say 10% of the quotes that Jesus used was from the word, from the, from the written word, from the logos. He quoted from Deuteronomy 6 and Deuteronomy 8, Jesus was the word. And by him being not only the word, but Jesus, I mean, he's the son of God. And you could say, Jackie, I ain't, I'm not Jesus. I, I almost went back to Waycross, went back to Georgia. We say ain't a lot. Some of you may be looking at me like, listen, I am whoever I am. And that was Jesus. And he had the power to speak back to Satan and cause Satan to flee. But can I tell you, the same power that rose Jesus is the same power that lives inside of you. The word says, greater is he that's in you than he, Satan, that's in this world. You have power resting inside of you. 
All we have to do is to connect, stay connected to the power. Like if you just look above those lights, they have all the elements inside for them to shine bright. But if they're disconnected, if I look to the back and I flip, cut the power from those lights, they're not going to accomplish, accomplish their purpose. Likewise with us. How do we defeat the enemy? We get the word inside of us. We begin to speak back. We begin to confront the enemy with the words of God. We begin to, that's our battle. That's, that's our weapon of war, God's word. When you, in, when you, and I close with this, when we are in moments of pain, moments of shock, the things that come to mind and exit, the things that come to mind and exit our mouth are the most primal things of our being. Listen to this. When you are squeezed, what's in you will come out of you. When we're squeezed, when we're put in a tight place, what's in you will come out of you. So I want to challenge you. I want to urge you to begin to read God's word and not just read it, not just, man, it's 1030. It's, it's, it's not just it's 1027 and my bedtime is at 1030. Let me spend just three minutes. Don't give God your last. We've got to give God our first because guess what? He gave us his. And as we stand with Jesus, as we stand in this world, we will encounter battles in life. You may just have come out of a battle. Or you may be in a battle right now. Or a battle may be right around the corner. But where you stand right now is worth it reading and getting into and meditating on God's word. So when the enemy comes, not if he comes, but when he comes, you'll be equipped to fight successfully against an enemy that wants to completely take you out. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God, that your word tells us that we will be attacked. Think it not strange that the fiery trials, the, the darts, the fiery darts will come into our life, God. But I thank you that your word, the sword of the spirit, it exists, oh God, for us to fight back, God. And I pray, oh Lord, that we would read your word, that we would meditate on your word, that your word would give us strength and courage Oh, God, and enable us to stand against the enemy as he comes against us. Thank you for each and every son and each and every daughter in here, each and every mighty man and mighty woman of valor. Lead us, God. Pray, God, that we surrender to your leading. This is our prayer today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Can we just give God a hand, praise? Can I take that from you? Yeah, go ahead. Give, give us one moment. This is unexpected. So uh, it's Pastor Appreciation Month, and for those of you that did not know that, like me, um, <laughs> we, are, we have been asked by MJ to make this presentation here. So ah! credit, credit where it's due. This is, this is not our doing, uh, but MJ, as is a lot of things around here, uh, uh, even, when she, even when she's not here, arranged, arranged for us to honor Pastor Jackie and Pastor uh, Danny, who's also not here, for Pastor Appreciation Month. So, do you want to say something? Oh, sure. Okay. sure. <laughs> I know. Put me on the spot. <laughs> um, so when Aaron deployed in August of 2018, 
I actually, with our kids, didn't go to church anywhere for a while. I just needed to see where God wanted to lead me during a time not having my husband with me. And um, it was kind of cool, but we moved here August of 16. But um, City Mission was third on the list for us to, like, visit when we first moved here. And the Lord led us to be somewhere else for the first two years. But then when he was gone, mm. one morning I remembered the name of this church and thought, okay, I'll, I'll go there. So exactly about two years ago, October of um, 18, I brought the kids here, and it was instantly I knew that this is where God had led us for that time. And um, I just appreciate Jackie and Sinitra, and I know uh, Danny and Emma aren't here, but um, the Holy Spirit is here, and he's welcome here. And um, so many people have really been a blessing, especially during um, the deployment time and uh, one thing that comes to mind now is whoever this could be for, but um, no matter where you're comfortable uh, physically, just trust the Lord, and no, no matter where you are at in your walk, um, just allow him to lead you and guide you, and um, he'll put you where you're supposed to be. And um, thank you, Jackie, for your faithfulness here and uh, your kindness. <laughs> And God bless you. <laughs> okay, and then just real quickly, so Pastor Jackie finished the message this morning with the exhortation to use and read the Word of God, and uh, so which was actually what I was about to uh, start with when I was going to read the scripture. So Paul told Timothy, he said, I write these things to you that you may know how to behave yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, which is the pillar and ground of truth. And so I'm going to read some of the things that Paul said about pastor appreciation. Okay, so in uh, 1 Corinthians 9, verse 7, it says, Whoso goeth to ward any time as his own charges, who planteth the vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof, or who feedeth a flock and eats not of the milk thereof. Say these things as a man, or saith not the law these same things also. For it is written in the law of Moses, thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Doth not God take care of our oxen? So this is our oxen right here. <laughs> this is the guy. So, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. Or saith he it all together for our sakes. For our sakes, no doubt this is written, that he that ploweth should plow in hope, and that he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of this hope. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap carnal things. And then down here, just a few verses, it says, even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. Okay, so that's what the Bible says. Appreciating those who minister to us spiritual things. So we love you, brother. Amen. And, and then one of these things, sorry, yeah. <laughs> and then we're also going to ask you to accept on Pastor Danny's behalf the uh, the other one. So there's two there, one for uh, one for Danny and one for Pastor Jackie. Uh, all right, so we love you, we love you, brother. Do you mind if we all just reach out your hands and let's pray for our brother uh, here? Let, let me say one thing before we pray. I know you guys are on edge. You're probably hungry right now, um, but we're, we're going to end here. I, I tell you, uh, this family, and I say that from the the, the bottom of my, my heart with all sincerity, um, this family is absolutely incredible. And I can speak on behalf of Sinitra, um, Danny, and Emma. Man, we absolutely love and appreciate you guys. Not for all the things that you do, right? We do appreciate that too. But we appreciate and value you as individuals. So thank you for just uh, taking a moment to, to, to appreciate and celebrate us. Amen. All right, let's, uh, let's pray together. Father God, we just thank you and we praise you for your goodness to us. Thank you, God, for uh, the body of Christ that we can gather here uh, from every tribe, every tongue, every kindred, every nation. God, we can gather around. You said, God, that you've made us all kings and priests. Thank you that we can come before you, but thank you, God, also that you ordained certain over the flock and to take care of us and to minister unto us spiritual things. And so we ask God uh, this morning for your uh, special hand of blessing on our 
Brother Jackie, and I pray for his marriage, I pray for his family, I pray for his ministry, I pray for uh, the vision that he has for this uh, community and for this church, and uh, as the leader and shepherd uh, of this uh, flock, I pray also for Brother Danny while he's away, uh, that you be with him and help uh, uh, help him bring him back safe. But God, we uh, thank you and praise you for these men and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.